this hymn title for us. Right now, me and Jacob's going to try a song we ain't never done with this track, so y'all going to pray for us.
61 tonight, Psalm 61. We have been uh, looking through the book of Romans, and we'll continue to do that. But I felt uh, the Lord impressed in my heart to do something a little different tonight. And so I'm going to veer from that and uh, just go uh, with this and see uh, what the Lord helps us with and tells us tonight. Psalm 61, and uh, we're going to read there uh, just a few verses the the whole chapter is not much. Psalm 61, when you found that and you're able, uh, let's stand and we'll read the Word of God and honor the Word of God by reading together Psalm 61. And let's look at verse number 1. Psalm 61 and uh, verse number 1. I'm going to uh, use this uh, lapel uh, here for take number 2. Eventually when it comes on, all right. <clears throat> Psalm 61. And you might need to bring that down just a hair. Uh, Psalm 61, there we are, verse number 1. Psalm 61, verse number 1, the Bible said, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. When you see that word, Selah, Maze Jackson said, you stop and say, hey devil, how you like them out? Uh, that word actually means to pause, reflect, and to think about what was just said. Say lot. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you that God, you would have your will and have your way. I pray, God, that you would speak to us. Uh, Lord, tonight as we look into uh, your word, I pray that God you would do, uh, Lord God, in our hearts and our lives what only uh, you can do. Now, Lord, have your will and have your way. Uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. I, as we um, read these verses, I'm going to call your attention to, uh, to something that I, that I saw uh, years ago as I was studying this psalm. And uh, there's three separate uh, I will statements uh, that you'll find in Psalm 61. In verse number one, notice uh, the psalmist there said, um, or verse number two rather, I, or, or he said, from the end of the earth will I cry. He said, I'm going to cry out, I'm going to call out to God from the end of the earth. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to believe God. These are some steps that we uh, we see that the psalmist takes uh, to bring him joy and bring him victory. If you notice, this psalm is a lot like the other, uh, many other psalms uh, where they start off where the psalmist, the writer there, and uh, this is a psalm of David, and David uh, was a lot like you and a lot like me. There's a lot of up times in his life. There's a lot of down times in his life. And uh, many times in the Psalms, uh, you, you see that, uh, that movement, that up and down from the beginning of one Psalm all the way to the end uh, of another Psalm. You can see uh, all that is, that is taking place. And uh, here in verse number one, we find him in distress. He is praying. He is calling out on God. And he said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to cry out to God. We ought to make up our mind that whenever a calamity comes, when destruction comes, when despair comes, uh, we just make up our mind, uh, I'm 
not going to run to the world. I'm not going to run to this one or that one to try to get my help. But I'm going to run to the Lord. I'm going to call out on God. I, I, I heard a preacher, I don't even remember who it was, years ago, I heard a preacher giving an illustration or uh, he, he was preaching a, in a message and he said, what are you going to do when calamity comes? Uh, what are you going to do? Where will you be when destruction strikes your life? Uh, Brother Robert, I don't want to have to get right with God when destruction comes. I don't want to be far off from God. I don't want to be away from God. Uh, Brother Glenn, uh, when the things happen in our lives that do happen in our lives, uh, I want to be close to God. When somebody needs uh, uh, daddy, when one of my youngest needs daddy to get a hold of God, uh, I don't want to have to go through some a bunch of repentance and trying to get things right uh, and, and trying to uh, find out if heaven, heaven will even hear my prayer. I don't want to have to, I want to skip all that. I want to be in a relationship and I want to be in a place uh, that I can call out on God. Yeah. I will cry unto the Lord. Verse number four, uh, he says this, and we see this. He said, I will abide in thy tabernacle. Then he said, I will trust in the covert of thy wings. He said, God, there ain't nowhere to go to. I'm going to stick around where you are. Where you're at, that's where I'm going to be. If you remember in the Old Testament, the Old Testament wasn't like the New Testament. We didn't have the Holy Spirit that would infill us. The Holy Spirit would come on the man and he'd leave a man. But for the, uh, the most part, God resided in the Holy of Holies uh, behind the temple veil. That's where the Spirit of God resided. So he just made up his mind. I know that's where God's at, and I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to be around where God's at. I say it's still good in 2019 yeah. to find out where God's at and tabernacle there a while and say, I'm going to stick around where you're at, God. I'm going to stay where you're at. We take a, we give Peter a hard time, but Peter said it. I believe a lot of like what you and I would have said it. Whenever he saw everything going on, he saw that uh, Jesus being transfigured, uh, the glory coming out of him. Uh, he said, it's good for us to be here. Let's build tabernacles and stay a while. Uh, I say, let's stay uh, uh, where God's at. Amen. Yes. Then notice this. He said, I will cry in verse number two. Verse number four said, I'm going to abide. I'm going to trust under your wings. But down in verse number eight, he says, so will I sing praise unto thy name. Now he went from crying and praying to the end of the psalm, just eight verses later, he's singing, he's worshiping, he's giving God the praise and he's giving God the glory. I, I say that you and I, I can follow that pattern in our life. I, I believe that you and I can take some steps uh, from our valley uh, to our victory. Amen. How many of you are ready to step out of that valley? And hallelujah. I like there's an old song that said, I'm going to walk out right out of this valley, lift my hands and praise the Lord. Y'all know that one. Amen. I'm showing how old I am. Amen. All right, let's look uh, here in verse number one. Verse number one. Hear my prayer. Let me, let me give you a proposition. They taught us to do this in Bible college. I believe that every one of us in this room, I believe every Christian can have and can enjoy, can experience a joyful Christian life. How can I do that? By following the steps that we find David did here in the Psalm, in Psalm 61. Look with me in verse number one. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. I'm glad to tell you that whenever you're in despair, God will hear you. I believe that the psalmist had a song to sing, and he had something to say. He'd say this, when I was in despair, he heard me. Aren't you glad? When the world fell apart, when the bottom fell out, aren't you glad you could call out on God and he heard your cry. He heard your plea. He heard your prayer. I say bless his name in a season, in a time of despair. He'll hear the child of God. Notice 
a, a few things that we see here about that uh, when he heard him. Verse number two says it like this. Verse number two said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It's a place that is steady. It's a place that is steady. I'm thankful that whenever I can call out on God and you call out on God, I'm thankful there's a rock that's still higher than you uh, and higher than me. I, I'm thankful that I can run to that rock. I'm thankful that I can hold on to that rock. But Brother Raymond, even better than that, I'm thankful that that rock holds on to me. Hey, hey aren't you glad that when you get to that rock, when you finally make it to that rock, you can rest in the rock. You can rest in the rock of ages. He's better than the rock of Gibraltar. I'm telling you, he don't move. He's steady. Amen. Yeah. Verse number three teaches us something here. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. He said, it's steady. When I was in despair, I found a place that was steady. When I was in despair, he heard me and he gave me shelter. I'm thankful for a place of shelter around the house of God. I'm thankful for a place of shelter in the things of God. I'm thankful that I can trust him. I, I'm thankful that, that he's holding me. I, I'm thankful that for that place of shelter that he's provided for you uh, and he's provided for me. Uh, he's been doing this thing for thousands of years uh, for every child of God uh, that ever needed a hold of God. Uh, or every child of God that called out uh, in their season uh, and time of despair, uh, he's been faithful. Uh, there's... <laughs> There's always room on that rock, Brother Robert. Yeah. I, I, you might, I, I watch this uh, nature show sometimes. My wife says it's boring kind of stuff that I like to watch. Yeah. But I watch these nature shows and stuff like this. And, uh, these penguins, y'all ever watch them penguins jump out of the sea and they get yeah. up on that rock. Yeah. And as the water, water comes, uh, some of them penguins get knocked down. And them mean old seals, we always look at the seals and think this is so sweet and precious. Them seals are killers is what they are. And, uh, uh, but those penguins will try to get up on that rock to have a little place of refuge uh, and a place of rest. Uh, I'm glad just as crowded as it might get, uh, there's always a place for you. Uh, and there's always a place for me. Uh, though the waves uh, may billow, uh, though the waves may rock, uh, and though the waves may roll, uh, I'm glad, praise be to God, uh, that rock is steady tonight. Amen. When I was in despair, he heard me. Let me ask you this. What is it that you and I need to call out on God tonight? What is it that's bringing us to a place of despair that we call out on him? He will hear you tonight. Look with me in verse number five. Verse number five said, For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. I believe that the psalmist was giving us some steps to go from praying to praising, to get out of our pit and sing his praise. I believe he'd say, you have to remember when, he, when you're in despair that he will hear you. Not only that, he'd say, when you are destitute, he will help you. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that we got a God that will help us uh, when nobody else can, uh, when nobody else will, uh, when nobody else is looking around, when nobody else cares, uh, when nobody else is concerned? Uh, I'm thankful I've got a God that sits on high and he looks down low. Uh, I've got a God uh, that cares uh, about my situation. Uh, uh, he cares uh, about what I'm going through. Uh, why uh, do you say that? I'll tell you why. Uh, because I have been chosen. Oh, yeah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given 
the heritage of them, excuse me, given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. God chose you. 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 God knew who you were. God knew what you'd be going through. God knew what you'd be. But I'm glad in our destitute situation, God helped us. We've chosen. We're called. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Now, most of us in this room tonight do not come from money. We don't come from prestige. We don't come from power. We're not king makers. We didn't come from a line uh, of anybody that has any, anything much behind them. Now, if you if you are, then we need to talk after service, and we'll be sure to uh, get get all your financials lined up because we should we could use some uh, blessings. Amen. But most of us don't have much that we can say we came from. I was riding down the road the other day, and uh, I saw one of those signs that kind of looked like a stop sign. Uh, sign on the side of the road uh, over in the kind of in the woods and it said Doster Realty and that just was a grim reminder to me Brother Glenn that that's the part of the family that has the money and we have none <laughs> <laughs> but I have Jesus Amen. Amen. we were uh, we were riding uh, we had gone uh, we went over to see uh, Larry's brother at the hospital yesterday and uh, we were over in the kind of the downtown area. I don't even know what that fancy area is. Old, old money, old houses, great big oaks and all this stuff. And man, those houses were fine. They were nice. And I'm, I'm, you start, if you start looking there, you're looking at half a million and up. Right. And, uh, and, uh, and my wife and I were, uh, I mentioned how nice those houses were. I said, I said, I'm sorry you couldn't get somebody rich. Actually, I said, why couldn't you be rich, is what I said first. And she said back to me, why couldn't you be rich? And, uh, but, uh, and she said, you know what, we are. We have the Lord and we have each other and we have our family. Right. And I got to thinking, you know, that's true. You know, God didn't have to mess with me, Raymond. God didn't have to spend any time with me. But Raymond, he came after me. And he wouldn't give up on me. He wouldn't leave me alone. And tonight, I'm saved by the grace of God. Tonight, I'm serving by the grace of God. Tonight, I'm secured by the grace of God. I, I say I've got it all tonight. I have a heritage of those that are called by his name. I'm part of the redeemed. I'm part of the blood-washed man. I'm part of that great crowd. Uh, go to 
to search all that out, trying to figure out all that. All I know is that David was in a hard place. David was in a bad place. And David needed help from God. And David, David needed hope from God. In fact, it comes to the place where he said, I, I, I think I'm going to die. Uh, but then here by verse number six, he said, Thou wilt prolong the king's life. Uh, he said, You know what? Uh, I've got enemies that come to surround me. Uh, I've got people trying to kill me. Uh, I've got people chasing me. Uh, but I know my God's on my side. Uh, and I know my God uh, is with me. Uh, and I know my God will go before me. Uh, and I know my God is behind me. Uh, and I know my God's on either side of me. Uh, he said, I, Thou wilt prolong. When I was drifting, he held me. Said this in verse number seven, and I'll, I'll be done. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Notice his devotion. That's his mercy. God loves you. God loved me enough that he would give us mercy. We didn't get what we, would, we deserved, and every one of us ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for that. Sometimes you'll hear people say, life's not fair. I, didn't, I don't get what I deserve. I throw my hand up and say, thank you, Jesus. I didn't get what I deserved. I've been living on mercy, and I've been living on grace for all these years. And I say, thank you, God, I didn't get what was coming to me. Mercy uh, spoke of his devotion. Truth speaks of his direction. Direction. Uh, I'm thankful that I have a God. Uh, I, I didn't mean uh, for this to, to go along with Sunday night, but I'm thankful I have a God that has truth enough to direct me. Truth enough to steer me. Uh, you know, we live in a, in a day and an hour. We live in a society. We live in a church world. Uh, where people say, well, you just got to love everybody. And I, I believe you ought to love people. I believe Jesus loved people. But I, I believe he also loved people enough to tell them the truth. I believe that he, he loved them enough to correct them when they were wrong. And I'm thankful he loves me enough and he loves you enough to correct us when we're wrong. I have three children, and when they're wrong, I, I love them enough to correct them because I don't want their life, I don't want their future destroyed. Uh, over habits that they're putting into their life that becomes uh, what their character is, uh, that becomes what their destiny is. Uh, I don't want that in their life. Uh, and I'm thankful that God don't want it in your life. Uh, and God don't want it in my life. Uh, I'm glad he chastens us uh, when we need it. I'm thankful for the truth of God. Uh, when I was drifting, uh, he held me. I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Tell it if you will. You know, uh, I was, uh, I, I had been saved for a, a, just a short time, a couple of years or maybe a little bit more. And uh, during that time frame, Kent and my brother and I were, uh, we were gospel musicians, also known as roadies. And uh, <laughs> me and him, he played the electric guitar and I played the, the rhythm. I still play pretty mean G chords, uh, but uh But, we, uh, I started playing the drums, and uh, he and I uh, were involved in our family, our extended family, as a gospel group. Well, during that time frame, I had, I had, I had this little old girlfriend, and she, she didn't like the things of God, anything like that. And uh, I was starting to spend a whole lot more time trying to devote myself to the things of God. And uh, she didn't like that. My, my dad especially, my parents to some degree, but my dad especially, uh, he was always kind of pushing us away from trying to go 100% for God during, during that time of my life. And uh, I, I was working. I had an excuse. Every other weekend I had to work Sunday morning. And I never one time skipped church or missed church that I didn't have to be at work or whatever. But I sat up in front of church, Brother Robert. But I might as well been out on the road. Because even though I was right there in my presence, physically, 
spiritually, I was a long way from God. But I'm thankful that God didn't give up on me. God kept on pursuing me. He even sent people by just to tell me things I didn't want to hear. Somebody would just say amen right there. Had people tell me stuff that made me mad. Then afterward I thought, or the Holy Spirit said, you know they're right. God has been faithful. He's been patient with me. And I say thank you, Jesus. When I was drifting, He healed me. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. I know we've been around this altar already. If you don't want to come, you don't have to come. But if you want to come tonight, how many of us will come and find a place and say thank you, God, God, I can get out of my place of the valley of my life and I can go on to the mountaintop experience. God, there's victory ahead for me. God, I just want to go ahead and do like the psalmist said, that I may daily perform my vows. That I may daily perform my vows. Oh, church tonight, and uh, I pray that the Lord help you this evening. Uh, what we'll do is, uh, on the way out, we'll take up the offering, and uh, but I want you to do this. Raymond, I want you to close us in prayer, all right? Uh, thank you again for coming, and uh, look forward to you being faithful and uh, being part of everything that God's going to do this weekend, all right? Let's pray. Yeah, the Father, we're going to come. Thank you.